Do you often feel like you have no time for exercise? You know, there's a struggle between life and work and activity, and it's a common one. It's hard to find the time, nevertheless, the, the motivation to move our bodies, but you can accomplish it if you try. Hi, I'm Diane LaFoon, and I'm here with your Joy Tip of the Week. I'm curious, do you exercise regularly? If so, what does that mean for you? Tell me in the comments. Let me know what regular exercise means to you. I know for me, it means a 40-minute brisk walk uh, at least five times a week. I like to try that get, to get that cardio workout in at least five times a week. And then just recently, I've started doing some strength training. So we'll see how the strength training goes. I know it's good for me and something I need to do, build my upper body muscles especially. So on a typical day, you know, most people spend a substantial amount of time sitting. We sit at our desks, we sit in our cars, we sit um, at our tables or on our chairs or on our couches. We sit a lot. And research has shown that sitting or a sedentary lifestyle um, can be really detrimental to our health. It can actually shorten our lifespan. It can diminish our quality of life. And it can increase the likelihood of developing a chronic disease, which that's not good at all. In fact, Dr. James Levine, Levin, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, of the Mayo Clinic, he studied the implications of, increasingly, of our increasingly sedentary lifestyle and what that means for us over the years. And he came up with two sentences to kind of overall encapsulate his results. He said, Sitting is more dangerous than smoking, it kills more people than HIV, and is more treacherous than parachuting. We are sitting ourselves to death. And if you look up Dr. Levine, you'll find that he has, uh, quote, coined the new term, uh, sitting is the new smoking. So he's right. It's kind of scary. We are sitting ourselves to death because a lot of things that we do, whether it's your commute or at your work or even when you're just relaxing at home, we are sitting all the time. So we've got to get our bodies to move. We're, we're created to move. It's a unique, our body is a unique and fascinating organism and it works best when it's actually active and moving. Otherwise, it's going to get stove up. You've been there. If you've been sitting a while, sometimes you can just be creaky as you, as you stand up and it's not good. God designed our bodies for activity and for movement. And if we don't move enough or in a variety of ways, then there are going to be consequences. And these are very detrimental consequences. So I just wanted to tell you a side note here of a personal experience. About a week and a half ago now, I tripped and fell up a step. Um, it was nighttime. I was very tired. We'd had a, a company here, and, and it was just a night that I was very tired. I had my hands full carrying things um, on my way to bed, and I tripped up a step, and I fell. And because my hands were full, I couldn't catch myself, and all of my weight landed on my right shin. So, you know, being the oil person, essential oil person that I am, I immediately went for my Cypress, my Valor, my Deep Relief essential oils, and I rubbed my shin down. And then plus I had a nasty carpet burn on my knee and I applied uh, something from Young Living called Lavender Cooling Mist. And so I was diligent the next day to keep up these oils like every couple of hours anyway. And then for the next um, few days, I would do it at least once a day, uh, applying these oils, applying the Lavender Cooling Mist to the uh, rug burn. And then um, it was interesting. I had a little pain, but um, after about a week, all of a sudden, I had bruises showing up all down my shin. I had bruises from my knee all the way to my ankle. Ugly, awful bruises. So to me, that said that that was a deep injury. And I am convinced of two things. I'm convinced that my daily walk keeps my bones strong. Otherwise, I would have broken a bone. It was that hard of a fall because those deep bruises came out so much later. And secondly, I believe that my essential oils and applying them immediately and applying them diligently helped keep my blood flowing, helped keep all of my um, bodily fluids flowing so that it helped kind of jumpstart my healing and the injury didn't incapacitate me. In fact, I actually did my daily walk the day after I fell. That next morning I got up, I was in a little pain, but I went for my daily walk, no problem. So I am convinced that exercise helps our bodies to bounce back too when we do have injuries. Um, so let's talk about the best way to get daily exercise 
into your routine. First of all, for me, I know if it's not on my calendar, it's not going to happen. And so I block out time in my schedule to make that exercise happen. Otherwise, if it, it may sound like you too. If it's not on your calendar and your schedule or planned, it's not going to get snuck in somewhere during the day. It's just not going to happen. Secondly, I like to exercise in the morning. And I would recommend that you exercise in the morning too. Because when you do it first thing, you kind of get a sense of accomplishment checked off for the day. I've done my exercise. I don't have to worry about fitting it in later in the day. And you're ready for the day. You can take on the day. I also find out find that a morning um, routine typically is less disruptive to my day. Um, you know, it's, it's earlier in the day. I'm not going to be having lots of phone calls or messages or things like that. And so um, I, it's just a better time than working out later in the day in the afternoon or the evening for me. And you might find so that is true, too. And then thirdly, you've got to um, create realistic goals for the exercise that you do. Um, you know, if you've got young children, if you are building a business, if there are demands on your life, you've got to be realistic. And if you can't do a 40 minute walk in the morning because you've got responsibilities, then find um, chunks of time that you can do something, 10 to 15 minutes here and there that you can move your body because that's what we're talking about today is creating times and opportunities for you to move your body. Um, just the key is consistency. You have to um, find ways to do uh, movement of your body, get your heart rate going, get your lungs breathing um, consistently in a daily way. And you've got to look at your own life and set some realistic goals for that. So um, one of the things that we can do, there's a few things that I would recommend if you need to move your body more, um, is to stand up and walk around when you're on the phone. It's funny, uh, the other day, um, my mom, she's upstairs. This is my, my office in the downstairs. And she said, I heard you. It sounded like you were right outside the door. Well, I actually was walking around and the windows were open and she heard me because I was talking on the phone. I like to walk around when I talk on the phone just to create movement, to have movement in my body. Um, you know, another thing that is um, very commonly known, but some people don't think of it because we're always in a rush when we're running our errands, but park far away from the door of the store where you're running your errands or from the post office or the bank or whatever. Park as far away as you can so that you get a little movement in, so you get a little walk in while you're out running your errands. You'll be surprised how much activity that adds and how many steps that adds to your day. And then... Um, finally walk around your house. I will never forget my great grandma. We called her granny. Um, she didn't have live in a big house. It was a, a pretty small house. Yet there was a hallway that went around between the dining room and the bedroom and the living room. And she would just walk around that little hallway just to have some movement. And it was a great example for me. I know too, um, there are times when it's beautiful outside that I will just go outside and walk around our yard just to get a little walk in outside the house. That can be on when I'm on the phone or watching a video or listening to a training or something like that. Just opportunity to um, put your body in motion because that's the deal. Our bodies were created to move. So at a Young Living Convention, this is back in 2014, I heard Dr. Olivia Wanker. He is a doctor, he's formerly um, an MD with um, the Anderson Cancer Center, and now he speaks for a living and, and works with Young Living actually quite a bit. And he was talking about exercise, and he said that a daily brisk walk for at least 30 minutes will do these things. A daily brisk 30 minute walk will reduce your chance of getting Alzheimer's by 50%. It will reduce your chance of getting diabetes by 60%. It will reduce your chance of getting cancer by 30 to 80%, depending on the type of cancer that you're talking about. It will reduce your chance of a hip fracture by 40%. It will reduce the chance of anxiety and depression by 50%. Love those endorphins we get from our walks. And it will reduce your chance of pain by 50%. I'm convinced my walk saved me from a great deal of pain when I fell a couple of weeks ago. And it will reduce your risk of premature aging and early death by over 20%. So, you know, a brisk 30-minute daily walk sounds like an easy way to take all of these health benefits, reducing all of these risks in our lives. Um, one of the things I'd like to encourage you about is um, using peppermint essential oil when you are exercising. 
Um, like I said, I use essential oils when I had my energy, uh, my, my injury, and I also use essential oils. I use peppermint essential oils when it comes to um, especially my daily walk. So the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition studied the effects of peppermint essential oil on exercise performance. So, and they had three conclusions. First, they found that peppermint essential oil provided relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles. Well, what does that mean? When we breathe, our air, the air that we breathe in, goes through um, tubes in our lungs called bronchial tubes, and these are surrounded by muscles. And so when the muscles of the bronchial, bronchial tubes relax, they open up more and allow more air to go into your lungs, and that's called relaxation of the bronchial smooth muscles, and that's something that peppermint does for us. It helps us to breathe more because those muscles are relaxed. Next, they found that peppermint essential oil increased the ventilation or the breathing more deeply, which helps your body get more oxygen and increases the concentration of oxygen to your brain. And then finally, the peppermint essential oil decreased the blood lactate level. Again, what does that mean? <laughs> so according to Dr. Wenker, oxygen is more readily delivered to your muscles, leading to a more prolonged muscle contraction before reaching what's called the lactic threshold. That's when you don't have enough oxygen going to your muscles and you produce energy with your muscles. So the muscle starts using a pathway that does not have oxygen in it. It's an anaerobic pathway, which creates lactic acid. And when you build up lactic acid in your muscle, then the muscle will quit working. That's, that's when you start getting the cramps and the pain and the I can't go any farther kind of thing. So how easy is it to use just a little bit of peppermint essential oil to help that lactic threshold go up? It enables you to work out better and longer, um, and it's easier on your muscles then. So my favorite way to use peppermint essential oil before I go for a walk is this inhaler. It's a homemade little inhaler. There's a little um, piece of cotton or whatever in there that has peppermint essential oil on it. And I'm not going to do it now, but I sniff my little inhaler um, big time before I go for my daily walks. Another simple thing you can do is just take that peppermint essential oil, drop a drop in your hand. It only takes one drop um, and you put it together. You rub your hands together and you breathe it in. Oh, it's so refreshing. It's such a cool sensation. I love to breathe my peppermint oil. <laughs> you see how it's just opening me up? Oh, I love it. One of my favorite oils. And the other thing you can do, of course, is just apply it topically to your muscles. Apply it wherever um, your, your muscles might need that um, relaxing and that opening up. So <clears throat> I highly recommend that you try incorporating essential oils into your daily ec exercise routine um, because there's so many benefits, like the increased oxygen levels, the decreased blood lactate levels, and the increasing the lactate threshold. So do you have a long list of reasons if you don't exercise daily as to the reasons you don't exercise daily? It might be, you know, challenging, but I, I'm convinced that you can find time because your responsibilities and commitments can't keep you from these health benefits. And it's just so worthwhile in the long run. I appreciate you watching. I hope you've been encouraged to incorporate daily exercise into your life or to make it a great habit, maybe even add some essential oils in. If you'd like, you know, if you'd like to try some peppermint essential oils, let me know. I would be glad to give you a sample so that you can see what difference it makes in your routine as you exercise. Um, I can tell a big difference when I forget to inhale my essential oil, my peppermint essential oil before I go for my walk. Um, it's just not the same. So if you'd like to try that, message me and let me know. Thanks for watching and uh, especially I hope that this has encouraged you to make daily exercise and activity, activity and movement of your body a priority for your life. We'll see you next week for your Joy Tip of the Week.